Ed Stiles with the Alberta Sport Development Centre. I'm the exercise physiologist. I've been working with athletes for over 22 years now. And one area that I'd like to talk to you today about are the knees. Uh, the most commonly injured joint in sport is the knee. Uh, and I think over 200,000 ACL injuries a year in North America. Uh, iliotibial band syndrome. And we see Osgood Schlatter's disease. Patellofemoral syndrome. I see them a lot in young athletes, and some might blame the sport that is just a part of sports, some blame the growth sport. The reality is that unless we teach young athletes to move with good squat mechanics and move with good gait patterns, um, we're setting them up. So we have a duty to help these guys learn how to move properly. Okay, so let's look at a few red flags that we see in young athletes and the way that they move. Uh, first is what we call a knee dominant squat. What we see a lot of times with these athletes is that they're loading their kneecap uh, way more than they should be. The glutes are designed to take a whole lot more load and so if we can convince them to load the glutes up as opposed to the knees, we're going to save a lot of those issues that we see commonly. First thing you'll see in a knee dominant squat is that they're basically their first movement is to move forward into the kneecap. So whether it's in a squat position or a lunge position, in a lunge you usually see that knee going significantly past the toe. That puts a lot of stress to the knee. So in squatting, typically what we want them to do is think of loading the glutes. So I'll have them put their arms out front for balance. And the first move will come directly from the glutes. So we're talking about pushing the bum back. So if they engage the glute and push the bum back, and then think of, so a keyword here would be sitting into the hips. Their weight should be in the heels. So if I say, bum back, sit into the hips, weight in your heels, we've just prevented a knee dominant squat very, very easily. Some of them will have a tough time, they feel like they're falling over backwards, so we often start with an assisted squat where they're hanging on to something and just helping themselves load those glutes up a whole lot more than they currently are. Same mechanics with your lunges is just to make sure that they're not leaning forward, so opening them up further, making sure the knee remains behind the toe. Another red flag that we see a lot of times is what we call collapsing knees or a valgus knee. And so from the front, you'll be watching an athlete and you'll see them do this sort of a thing with the knee where one side will collapse inward. This is a prime candidate for ACL injury. We know that with collapsing or valgus knees, they're very highly likely to have an ACL injury. <clears throat> we can prevent it by knowledge first off. And so the idea would be that the knees, ankles and hips should strap, track in a straight line. Arms are up front for balance basically just have them sitting into their hips and the whole idea would be that they're focusing whether there's a mirror in front of them they can see what's happening but there shouldn't be any change in that knee alignment and so part of it is just awareness and the other part would be to have some resistance against their legs so that they're having to fire the gluteus to pull those knees out a little bit so as they're sitting down those knees and hips track in a straight line uh, the other thing that we would see is a dominant loading a lot of times right-handed athletes will load into the right hip a lot People with uh, past injuries on maybe they sprained their right ankle, they'll tend to go away from that side, they'll load it in their left hip. And so a lot of times these are correctable just by awareness. Some athletes won't even be aware that they're doing it. So using things like UberSense, using your iPads to record them and show the athlete to say, look how much you're loading, and then have them do their squats in front of a mirror so that they can actually see, holy moly, am I ever moving to one side. So a few keys to uh, prevent this or cue words that I would use would be no twist in the hips, um, have them use a mirror, and then uh, think of even right to left. So they're constantly thinking about their left side and the right side having the same amount of load in it. 